And hi, welcome back. So we're going to continue our discussion of post-processing. So in the last video, we actually saw some of this... Uh, okay, let me clear the output first. Oops. Clear. Okay. Oops. Clear. Alright. So uh, in the last video, we actually saw how to uh, just do an all run and um, get data out from the post-processing function. And... Um, Hmm. So we, we have found a way to uh, you know carry on uh, plotting these things in Excel. Of course, we want to modify it, things a bit, you know, mix things up a bit uh, to suit our purposes, right? We want to still plot uh, our uh, velocity profile through the pipe, hopefully using this post-process function instead of just para view, okay? So um, we're gonna try something a little uh, like this. So I wanna uh, get this out. Okay, let me go to plate hole. Uh, solid. So I wanna copy this to the home directory, cpar dot and again squiggly line forward slash. Okay, so let's change to the home directory. We're going to the plate hole. And here we have everything we have, all the files here. So now we have a copy, we can play with whatever we want. Right, so um, let's take a look at uh, the all run file again. Okay, so, um, oops, let me see. Yeah, so again, we'll try to, based on our newfound knowledge, run these lines of code one at a time. Then we go and explain. Uh, which, which, uh, how do we actually get about all of these things? Uh, you know, especially the, the third and fourth line, these are pretty uh, unfamiliar. We still want to find out what they do, and then hopefully, we'll be finding out a way of reverse uh, engineering. We're going to modify the code and do something about it and adapt it for our purposes. That's the objective for this video. So, I'm just going to run it all clean first. Right, so what's the first thing? We do block mesh, uh, block dot block mesh. Okay, so block mesh is done. So vi log dot block mesh, it will be as per normal. So nothing too different, and we'll run solid displacement foam, and we'll put it in a log dot solid displacement foam. Okay, and then you know all, all the things are pretty much run already. So um, let's take a look at the files. These are just the basic ones. You'll notice that uh, in this uh, in these files we have a D, we have a sigma, and then we have a uniform folder. All right. Now, what does the third line do? Well, uh, let's take a look at all run. Okay, so it says post process function component sigma. All right, so let's type that out. Uh, post process. Uh, if you forget where the code is, you can look at look here. Post process function component sigma. Post process dash function components sigma. All right, so it's going to do that and look at, let's look at the 100 file again and we'll see that we have new files here. These are all the uh, new components of the sigmas, which are the stresses again, and now it's being split up into components. So let's take a look at sigma. So sigma is a stress tensor. All right, so it has uh, six components in it. All right, so um, we have 1,000 entries with these six components. It's going to be a very long list. And if you want to plot, it's going to be challenging. So what uh, what this does is to split everything up into its components. So let's take a look at sigma xx. This is the normal stress with respect to the x direction, if you, are, if you know what I'm talking about. But you see this internal field now, it only has you know one, one uh, piece of data per line. And that is a scalar form. 
because there, there's only one component per line as compared to, let's say, sigma. This is in a tensor form where there are like six components per line. This represents a tensor. Yeah. So that is what the third line does. It doesn't plot anything. So if you look, we, we remember that there was supposed to be a post-processing file here and now there is none. Okay. So let's just uh, run the fourth one, which is post-process function and single graph. Okay, so now we see that it has a post-processing folder. All right, and then it's uh, plotting the sigma xx. Can you see this? Sigma xx, and then you see post-process function single graph. All right, it's plotting sigma xx. Now, how do you uh, control uh, what it's plotting? So we can go to system, and then we'll look at the single graph file. So again, it's like any other control dix file. So this is what it says. It's a single graph, and then it starts from this coordinate and ends at this coordinate. So what is this start and end, anyway? <coughs> Excuse me. What is this start and end? Uh, well, could you remember this one where we do a plot over line? We did a plot over line, and remember we had this little arrow that goes from this point to this point. And we have the point 1 and point 2, point 1 being the start point, point 2 being the end point. And if you want data across this line, you know, you specify two points and then you'll capture all the velocity data along this line. Now, this two start and end, it does it very similarly, right? So we have uh, plotted, basically, we have plotted, uh, oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, let's go to post-processing and let's see the single graph output. So CD100, VI, everything. So you see, we have plotted uh, this distance, or this coordinate, so to speak. Okay, so from 0 0.5 all the way up to 2, right? So let's take a look. So where, where do we get these numbers from? Let's take a look at, oopsie. Uh, let's take a look at the system and single graph, right? So, uh, yeah, that's good. Um, so it starts from zero, uh, 0 0.5 to 2. Can you see the 0 0.5 and 2? That's where we started and ended. So this is the y-axis. So indeed, uh, it's plotting some kind of y-axis. And what is the dependent variable? The dependent variable being plotted here is sigma xx. So it's going to take the y-axis and it's going to plot against sigma xx. And that's what it's going to do. How do you specify what it plots against? Well, um, we have this field called sigma xx, which tells you I want to plot sigma xx, right? And um, you have a set config and it says uh, x is y, right? So, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's all... All well and good. Uh, it, it's going to plot the y-axis against uh, sigma xx, or the other way around, depending. Yeah, uh, how we're going to do it. So these two, these two will sort of tell us like, okay, I, I need to uh, use this graphing dictionary. So we don't touch. We we don't we don't touch these two things over here. So we just leave it alone because it works. Um, I mean, for now, we can do that. We're not looking for anything complicated. So let's say, instead of uh, instead of plotting just the sigma xx, I want to plot all of sigma, for example. So that means all the stress tensors. Let's see whether this works. All right. So let's go to system. And I'm going to VI single graph. And I want to check and see whether I can do a sigma. So remember sigma, sigma was the tensor file. All right, it's a tensor file with 1000 points and then uh, it's got six components, right? All right, let's see whether, let's see whether changing this actually 
um, changes the output and let's see whether there's an error that comes out so single graph and let's see what happens so again um, all seems to be running all right except for some warnings but uh, if it comes out right it comes out right then don't, don't really care about the warnings anyway <laughs> yeah so let's take a look at the hundred and you look at the line not sigma xy so vi line sigma not xy and you take a look at this it's plotting from 0 0.5 all the way up all the way up to wherever it's appropriate yep from 0 0.5 to 2 okay um, yeah and then it's plotting all the files out all the stress components out now of course if we we do the same thing we, we can plot it on Excel uh, we will have uh, six data plots no issue all right so of course uh, if we how do we find the names of what we need to plot well if we look at uh, if we look at the hundred file we look at these things called D Sigma Sigma EQ Sigma XX all right you notice these files names are named as such so initially we were looking for Sigma XX if we use the uh, we typed in sig Sigma XX into that single graph file it will look for the file called Sigma XX and then it will start plotting if we look for Sigma for example we will look for the Sigma file and then it will start plotting okay so oops wrong one okay so post-processing uh, single graph and you look at the hundred yeah so it'll plot across all the times okay all the time files that are given so don't worry about you know yeah don't worry about the time um, as in don't worry about you know how do they select which time to plot it will plot everything out so let's go to system single graph all right so now more or less we know what it's talking about let's try to adapt it for uh, our open form uh, file case so this is a very useful set of slides all right from Chalmers all right I'll put this in the video description and this teaches us you know how to uh, do the same thing all right so um, right so we have the velocity we want to plot let's say he's uh, he's doing it for the cavity file which is the I go form um, and he's copying this single graph uh, correct uh, this single single graph uh, file right and then uh, he's modifying this file using the set uh, the set function and what does this do this is actually you know um, um, Linux's way of you know modifying modifying text files or modifying text files via the command line again this is a whole new syntax if you're not familiar with it uh, I can introduce it in the next video okay but a uh, case in point is that you know you don't you don't need to you don't need to uh, always uh, you know well you know uh, velocity is a vector it has the x y and z component we don't always need to split it up before plotting it out all right and um, yeah so what and the other thing is that we don't always need our y coordinate to be um, the y coordinate to be uh, the only thing plotted against the other thing you want you can do if your let's say your line if your line here is skewed it is not aligned with the y-axis then how are we going to plot so if it's uh, not uh, parallel to the y or x axis or z axis we can use this thing called distance instead so um, let's try replacing it with distance and see what happens okay oops vi system single graph so instead of com uh, set config at y we'll try distance okay and we'll right and quit and um, we'll do post process function single graph okay so let's see what the post processing file looks like single graph 
uh, is 200 so vi line uh, sigma xy okay all right so you can see instead of starting at uh, 0 0.5 it now starts at 0 so it's starting from a distance 0 and it goes all the way up all the way up to 1.5 not surprising because now uh, we are talking about a distance so the final it, it started at uh, well the same x and z coordinates but it starts from y equals 0 0.5 all the way up to y equals 2 but the distance between them is 1.5 units so uh, we we can do that so that uh, it starts from a distance of 0 all the way up to a distance of 1.5 I'll perform or calculate everything up for us so that if we have a different kind of a point right a very oblique ish looking point uh, um, distance can be used as a more you know generic kind of a indicator right so uh, yeah and then you can uh, plot the x y and z components of velocity respectively and it will do what it needs to be done uh, it will plot out the velocity components and then we can find out the magnitude thereafter not an issue uh, otherwise we can use a post-processing to calculate out the magnitude for us either way is fine um, or we can do it in Excel also okay all right so we'll just go with the simple all right so we want to just like this uh, just like this guy here we, uh, guess this guy was saying we want to copy this single graph dictionary into uh, our file so first thing first let's go into our turbulent piezo phone we'll copy this over cpar single graph into the home directory so we have the single graph uh, then we're going to use the move command single graph from uh, let's let's do the github open form workspace i want to copy it into the thin pipe flow snappy x mesh and i want to uh, go into the turbulent piece of form now notice i'm using tab to get all these things out so i don't have to keep lsing so it's easier oopsie easier for me so so see now it's disappeared let's go to github thin pipe flow and turbulent so you can see that the single graph dictionary is there you just need to move it to the system single graph so dot forward slash system and then we'll move it into the system folder so see the system all right so this is where the single graph will be okay so not an issue let's try plotting a graph now single graph okay so again we have a start and end point we don't want the sigma field anymore we want a velocity field and then we still want to use the axis as the distance okay so we'll stop for now um it's gonna uh, shoot past 20 minutes if i keep talking but mm, don't worry uh, we'll talk more about the next video and of course we can start discussing this function called set it's very interesting you can now you can script in the editing of text files into your uh, ubuntu or linux uh, scripts so thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time i'll put this uh, pdf in the link uh, hope you enjoyed if you like it please hit the like and subscribe button i really appreciate that thank you very much i'll see you again